Okay, now there are a few implications of having embedded objects. The uh, first question, now what if I want to configure uh, the columns of my user details.java? Yes, I can do a add column annotation on top of a field and I can configure each and every column that I want. But if I have an embedded object, uh, say address, how do I configure all the columns of this address object, say address has a city. Now I want to call city as city underscore name, say in my user details table. Now, how can I configure the city field of this user object here? There are a couple of ways we can do it. Uh, the first way is to go to this uh, sub object, the, you know, the embeddable object, and I can configure the name here itself. So I can have a, I can go to the city uh, member variable here. And on top of that, I can do a at column and uh, let me import this. So this has the name and I can call this city underscore name. So let me give a name for all of these. We'll just call this pin code. Okay, so now I have uh, the at column annotation for each of these fields inside the embeddable object. Now, what happens is no matter where I embed this address object, it's going to carry this configuration. Now I have used this uh, address object inside my user details uh, class. Now the user details table will have these column names that I have configured inside this embeddable object. Now I have another uh, another object, say company object, and I, I want to have a company address. I have address as a member variable of that company object. Then even the company table would have these column names. So let's just quickly test that out. I will again run this as a Java application, it's going to drop everything and recreate. So there you go. Your uh, insert query gives you all the column names. So here we have city name, pin code, state name, street name, all those things are configured in the embeddable object. So it gets carried over no matter where, where you actually embed this object, um, it gets carried over. Now, there is one other question now, say for example, I have this address object here, right? There is one member variable for address object inside this user details. What if I have this requirement where I need to have a home address and an office address? So I need two address objects inside the same class. How would it work? So let's say, for example, I, I define again at embedded private address. Let me call this home address and I'll call this office address. Okay, this, this is a fair enough requirement. You can you can embed, uh, you can have any number of instances of an object inside this model object. In that case, how would it work? Home address, yes, it's gonna go look it up. Street underscore name, city underscore name, state underscore name, yes, it's gonna create. Now it goes to office address. Now again, street underscore name, no, it cannot create that because there's already a column with that name. So this is a problem. Now, how do we solve this? We can solve this by overriding the default name when you are embedding. Now, when I'm embedding this home address, I don't want it to take this default street underscore name. I want it to have a home underscore street underscore name, say for example. So I'm, I can override the column names here so that it does not take the default. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if I have multiple such objects, I can give unique names for each of those objects so that there is no conflict. And then each of those objects can have a set of columns which are to be created for this address object. Now, how do I actually do the override? I use what is called as at attribute override tag. This attribute override tag again from Java extra persistence, it helps me configure all the attributes, uh, let's say reconfigure all the attributes that have been either configured here 
or I can change the default behavior so that I can make it specific to my needs. And secondly, I can make it distinct so that there's no overlap between different objects. Okay, inside this attribute override, so I can give name equals. Now, when I say name, I need to give the name of the attribute inside this home address that I'm overriding. So this tag is for this whole object. Now I'm saying I want to override the way the home address is embedded. Now I need also need to specify what are the fields that I want to override. Now home address has street name, city name, state name, pin code. If I'm doing two, you know, if I'm configuring two such embedded objects, I will obviously have to override all of those properties, at least for one of these objects. I can leave this as, uh, say, office address, I can leave it as it is, so that it takes these default values. But for one of these two objects, I will have to override each and every field. So first of all, what I do is I specify the field name. In this case, it's street. So let's start with street. So the field name is street. And now what am I overriding? I'm overriding the column. The column name has to change. So I say column equals. Now I will have a new column annotation. So I'm going to create a new column annotation with the name home. street name. Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating, I'm annotating a new column and I'm saying override the street property of the home address with this column name. Don't use the default column name, use this home street name as the column name. Now the same way I will have to override the city name, state name, and pin code as well. So let me just... Now in order to have multiple attribute overrides, I cannot have, you know, another add attribute override here. Uh, I will have to encapsulate all these attribute overrides inside another annotation. Call that attribute overrides. So I have a plural annotation here and all my individual attribute annotations, all the individual attribute override annotations have to be inside this attribute overrides annotation. So I put a comma at the end of this, which means the first override is done. And then I will create two more overrides. Okay, now let me import attribute overrides. Let me expand this. Okay, I think I do not have the parenthesis in order, let me make this as one line. Okay, so close one more here. Close. Yeah, there you go. Now, I have these four attribute overrides because I need to override all of these four attributes. So. Now it's simple. I just do a city and then I override it with home city name. State is, I'll override it with home state name and I think there was pin code. Yeah, pin code. Pin code is overridden with home in code. Now I can do the same thing even for uh, office and call each of them office street name, office city name, but I'll spare you that. 
uh, let's just save it as it is and we'll run it. So now what will happen is there will not be an overlap. Um, the, all these attributes are overridden for the home address instance. So each one of these will have home street name, home city name and so on. But as far as your office address is concerned, the office will take the configuration in the embeddable object itself. So we don't have to do anything there. Um, of course, I'll have to change these guys here because I I updated the member variables. So I will just generate get as and set as again for both. Okay, we're done with this. Now in Hibernate, I'm going to set home address and create a new address object could use the same one but I'll just create a new one so that we can see how multiple objects can be embedded and then user dot set office address as address 2 okay now when we save this and run we should get two columns each for the address well they can see home city name and city name home pin code and pin code so pin code city name are the values that uh, we got because uh, you know we have specified it inside the embed object but uh, the home city name home pin code home state home street these are the ones that we overridden while we were embedding the uh, address object into the user object okay now that this is clear there's one last thing that i'd like to say um, we've seen this uh, done for member variables we have a member variable as an object now there is one special case where this user id the uh, primary key of this model object itself can be an embedded object now let's say i have uh, you know i I have an object which has the first name, last name, social security number, or you know, uh, login ID or something like that. And a combination of all those is a primary key. I know it's a far-fetched example, but assume that we have a few member variables which put together forms a primary key. In that case, you can have, uh, you know, probably a private user uh, name object and that itself is a primary key so we will we can use the at embedded but it would not work uh, with the at id so let me remove the generation if that's the case we would not have a generated key now let's say i have this just for example login name say okay login name is an object let's assume and this object has a combination of fields that forms the primary key. In that case, yes, ID has to be there, but I cannot use the at ID annotation and I cannot use the at embedded annotation. Instead, what I need to use is the at embedded ID. So this annotation is for embedded objects. It's again from javax.persistence. I'm not going to implement this, but it's it's fairly straightforward. It's same as what we have for address. It's, a, it's another object that's embedded here. That object has to have this uh, embeddable, of course, but in that, in the case where you want to have that embedded object as a primary key, in that case, you would have to use the at embedded ID. So in that case, Hibernate will treat a combination of all the member variables of this object as the primary key and if there is any repetition in all the values being the same for two different records that's when hibernate says hey no it's um, you know it's it's not allowed the object itself and the combination of all the member variables is what has to be unique and of course even for the embedded id annotation i can have attribute overrides i can define different columns and uh, say okay this member variable of this object will have a different column name so all that kind of configuration will still be will still hold good all the attribute overrides will still hold good but the only difference is if you are embedding an object and that object happens to be the primary key in that case you cannot use the id annotation and you cannot use the uh, at embedded annotation instead you use the at embedded id annotation